All right, we are here at my outdoor worm bin, and I'm gonna show you what I do every time I feed, and that is take some castings out. So what I have here is one of the trays of my vermi hut. I've got an extra 20 gallon container, and I've got a little container to put the worms in. So if you look here, this is kind of my setup. I've got this white basin, it's just a three gallon basin that sits on top, and that's to help deflect the sun, that kind of thing. And I also use it to put all the big stuff in here, which you'll see in a minute. And then this 20 gallon fabric pot has two in it, and I just fold down the flaps. And what you'll see inside is a whole nother one. So let me get this folded open, and then we'll get started. So it has actually been one of the longest times I've ever taken to get inside this worm bin. It has been 20 days and we fed a bunch of stuff in here. We fed pineapples, all kinds of pineapple chunks and the outside of it. And we did a hot chocolate feeding where we had marshmallows and hot chocolate on it. And I checked after about three days and that was all gone. I didn't even get video of it. So that went super quick. But what I typically do is I'll come around the edges and I will sift the casting from the edges. But since it's been 20 days, there's castings all over the place. So I'm not going to get too excited about just getting the edges. But what I do is I just put it in here. And then I put it in the 20 gallon pot right here. And actually, I probably should have done this first. And then I take this and I just kind of shake it around so that all the big chunks are sifted. And this is about a quarter inch holes right there. And then what you have left is kind of the big stuff. And what I'll do here is I'll just pull out the worms. All right, there still may be some worms in here, but they'll eventually go back in. And then I just dump the big stuff in here. And then I repeat. So again, 20 days is a long time, so I'm getting a lot of castings, but I treat this bin as a continuous flow which just means that I continuously take castings out. There is no one harvest date where I take them all out at once. I take them out every time I feed, which I try to do about once a week. So when you see me do those time lapses at the end of the videos, that's from all the worms that I've pulled out as I've sifted castings. So anytime I do a time lapse at the end, that's because I've sifted castings. And typically I get about three to four pounds of castings every time I do this. So this bin is just a workhorse. It had about 6,000 worms. And I gave 2,000 away, so I'm guessing I have somewhere around 4,000 worms in here right now. Just kind of, <laughs> some of them kind of get stuck in between, and I'll take those out. I'm going to do a, either one or two more siftings here real quick. So either way, I'll get all these worms. Any of the worms that went in that white basin are going to go back in the bin. And any worms I find here are also going to go back in the bin eventually at the end of my time lapse. And any kind of wisp, I make sure that I... Look for them all, and then I give it a quick rinse and pour it into here because the wisps are so tiny. Here we go in here. I don't know if you can see it very well. Some of the paper gets through, but I mean, this is just great castings right here. Check that out. That is just fantastic. All right, I'll recheck this and make sure I got all the worms out. Let's go ahead and pick some of the ones out of where the castings are. Now, in here are probably a lot of cocoons so all these castings that are in here are eventually going to go into my storage and within the storage the baby worms will hatch and i just have a little bait cup in there that i capture the babies as they hatch and then i'll put them in my vermi hut because that is the one bin that i have that has a mix of worms so let me just show you how many how much castings i have this is pretty amazing just how much this bin produces you know, on a week to week basis. <laughs> I've got a uh, blue tarp here. You can see castings just kind of flying, but I, nothing is wasted. I get them all, but yeah, check that out. I mean, that is pretty deep in there. Look at that. Just great castings. I mean, just perfect moisture, everything just fantastic. And I had a couple questions about how hot my worm bin gets. And uh, I think both Sandra and Peggy had asked that. And I put the thermo thermometer in, yesterday and 83 degrees was about the average sometimes 82 83 degrees so not too hot and right now it's 96 degrees out so not too bad it's shaded i think having them in this fabric pot where you fold down and then you have this on top helps to 
you know, provide shade. It's on the ground, so again, a little bit cooler than if it was just sitting in the hot sun. Certainly, I think the temperature difference there would be easily 30 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'll try and put Celsius up on the screen for all these temperatures. All right, so this is gonna go into my storage. Try to get all the little worms out. And then this just goes right back on top. And what we're going to do now is kind of clean this out, make sure we got all the worms and the wisps out. Make sure we get all the worms and the wisp out. And I will meet you back and we're going to do a feeding on this bin. So now that we've taken all the castings out that we want, it's time to set this up for feeding and check on our last feeding zone. And what I'm expecting to find is some of that pineapple that we put in here. We had some regular pieces, but we also had some of the outside rind of it. And this may be what we're seeing right here. In fact, this looks like the bottom part of it. Looks like they have taken most of the flesh off and they are absolutely in between all the different layers of it. So that's gonna take a little bit longer to get through for them. And let's kind of look under here now. Another thing I'm noticing is just tons of castings and tons of worms. Check that out. Now, these look like a lot of juveniles, some mature ones too. They're all red wigglers, but I think some of those bigger ones were out on the edges. And I'm going to kind of spread all around here and look at that. Oh my gosh. Every square centimeter, every square inch is just oodles and oodles of worms. They are absolutely all over the place. And this looks like just a little piece of avocado here. So <laughs> good showing. We definitely have at least 4,000 worms in here. And if you notice, I'm only wearing one glove, and that's just because as I dig down with this hand, I don't want it to kind of look nasty on the video in my fingernails. So I just kind of use one glove, and I just kind of set things on this other hand. I don't really dig too much, but lots of worms. I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. All right, I'm just going to kind of dig around and kind of air it out, make sure there's no areas of fermentation or ammonia. And let's look at this. This is an avocado pit. I'm just gonna kind of split it open and make it more accessible for them. It's just a little bit hard and a little bit dry. All right, let's keep digging around. And as I go through here, the only things that I'm finding are kind of hard pieces. This is a little bit of corn cob, so that's lasting a little while. I think another piece of, this actually looks like a wood chip. I'm not sure what that is. And I put regular compost in here occasionally, so I'll find some garden scraps and that kind of thing in here and maybe some pieces of wood or sticks. This right here is a mango seed and they've pretty much gotten all the inside. Occasionally they'll kind of make a little hotel out of it and I see a couple in there. We have a pine cone in here somewhere. I don't know if we'll find it, but it has been in here over a year. Here is more corn cob. And we'll get to this other area right here. Just a, this is the only piece of that pineapple left. I'll put somewhere in a picture here, you know, how much we put in there, but there was a lot. And here is another piece of corn cob. I'll just kind of break that up. It is really, really fragile, as you can see, and just breaking it up with one hand. So yeah, this is, they really turned a lot of this to castings. I probably could have pulled out maybe another five pounds of castings easily in here, but the volume has gone down significantly because everything's turned to castings. So what I'm gonna do now is give them a really big feeding, but I'm also gonna put in just an enormous amount of bedding because we wanna get this outdoor bin up and running again. And it is obviously running pretty fast. In fact, it's running about as, as fast as it was before I gave those 2,000 worms away into my neighbor's sub pod. So let's go ahead and get this started. So we'll start with a really good layer of shredded cardboard and shredded newspaper. And one of the other things the executive producer mentioned is that she didn't see the scoby in here and neither did I. That thing has been going for several months also. All right, so that's a good bedding for the bottom. We're gonna put some food scraps on here and mix in some bedding and then more food scraps. So here are the food scraps that we had in mind. This is absolutely full with all kinds of Food scraps that were frozen. There's some banana peels and carrots. Got some tomatoes in here, apple cores. I like to put them in this container. I just throw them in as we use them and they get frozen. And then when it's time to feed the worms, I just kind of set them out, let them thaw a little bit. Not enough that the, you know, any kind of flying insects or fruit flies will get into them. 
and then I just come out here and feed them. So let's do that right there, and I'm gonna add some more shredded cardboard. We'll almost do a layer thing here. Almost kind of like the lasagna bin that I saw AV doing and Plant Obsessed has absolutely perfected. And then some more veggies and fruits, food scraps. I just love this as a way to get rid of my food scraps. I don't feel like I'm wasting so much when I know that I'm going to feed them to my worms and then eventually they're going to go into my garden and then feed me and my family again. So this just warms my heart as I put all this stuff in here. The other thing I want to mention is we didn't see a whole lot of black soldier fly larvae. And as I was kind of taking apart the bin, I think I realized why that was. And that's because with these fabric pots being one inside the other and folded up, they didn't have anywhere to get out. What a black soldier larvae likes to do is they'll go and kind of make their way out of wherever they were eating. And they kind of use an off ramp and then they finish their process of turning into a fly and then fly away. But I think what was happening is they were getting in between the layers and not able to turn into flies. So they're just not reproducing that fast. So that is probably why I didn't have any trouble with black soldier fly larvae overtaking my bin last year and this year either. We got one more round of the veggies here and I think this will kind of do it. And then I'm gonna put something special that I've been saving for a while. And that is some moldy applesauce. This was sitting in our refrigerator and then we put it in our freezer and I just kept forgetting. And then the executive producer kept trying to remind me to put that in there. So this is just absolutely nasty, but it will help to moisten this new bedding that we have here. So I think that big mold chunk came out somewhere, but there's some applesauce. And now we're gonna go in with our amendments. And one of the amendments I've been putting on is pulverized oats and the worms seem to be going at them pretty quickly. I just like to put a thin layer over it. So there you go. And the next thing I like to put in is use coffee and tea grounds that we drink every morning and during the day. And I put these in all my bins. I've got an outdoor worm bin, which is this one right here. I've got a worm tower and I also have a tiny worm bin. If you're interested in looking at any of those videos, I kind of run them differently and do different experiments kind of things in those. And then I add some pulverized eggshells, which the worms use as grit and is also good for my garden. So we'll just add that on top. And then I think what we're gonna do is just add a whole bunch of bedding. After we add this bedding right to the top here, I'll kind of try and fold in some of the castings that were there because we're gonna do this time-lapse at the end with all those worms that I pulled out. Let's go ahead and kind of put this on top and we're getting a lot of worms. This, this bin just has so many worms. And since they ate almost everything down except for the bottom of that pineapple, they are just absolutely spread all throughout kind of evenly, no real big clusters anywhere, but certainly lots of them. So let me just put this here and kind of get a, an area where I know the worms can kind of settle down into, and then we'll go ahead and start that time lapse up. All right, so I'm thinking anywhere from one to 200 worms here. So let's get this time lapse going. Here we go. Right, it looks like most of them went down there. So let's just go ahead and add some more bedding and I'll add it around to the sides too. Cause again, we want to boost up the volume in here. So I appreciate you guys staying this long to watch the rest of the video. And I hope you all are doing well with your bins and having a great day. So happy vermicomposting everybody. Take care now.